hi everyone so in this lecture we will study recursion okay so recursion is one of my favorite topic the best part of recursion is we can easily code the most complicated problems okay recursion is very important topic because going forward in many data structure we use recursion only okay so we have to do recursion properly otherwise we may face a lot of problems okay so what is recursion what is the definition of recursion so recursion is when a function is calling itself okay the definition of recursion is when a function is calling itself so function calling itself okay so this is recursion okay so till now what we have seen i have a function main main is calling a function a function a is calling another function b and so on okay but here in recursion what i am trying to say here is a function will call itself that is we have a function main main function is calling a function a function a is again calling function a and so on okay so it is a little weird when function a is calling function a itself okay now let's try to think in a different manner okay when we will use recursion so we will use recursion we will use recursion whenever the solution of a problem depends upon the solution of a smaller problem okay let us take an example so suppose i want to find n factorial okay we want to find out what is n factorial so what we will do can we write like n factorial is this is n n minus 1 n minus 2 and so on till 1 okay so can i write this line can i write this part in another way can i write it like n factorial is n multiply n minus 1 factorial okay we can write it like this way now suppose i have a function factorial okay so i have a factorial function i will give it n and it will give me n factorial okay so factorial of n it is same as can i write like this n multiply factorial function n minus 1 okay so this is the function name fact is the function name okay so this function takes a integer as argument and it will return me it will give me n factorial factorial of n is nothing but n multiply factorial of n minus 1 okay so here we can see a function the fact function is calling the fact function but with a smaller input okay so when we will use recursion when a problem depends upon the problem of the same nature but with a smaller input size i am repeating myself we will use recursion when a problem depends on a problem of the same nature but with a smaller input size okay so here we can see i have a problem i want to find the n factorial it depends upon the it depends upon a smaller problem of the same nature nature is same but with a smaller input size okay now what we are trying to do here is so we are trying to divide the problem so i have a big problem i have a big problem i will divide i will convert the problem into smaller problem i will again convert it into a smaller problem i will again convert into a smaller problem and it will go on okay so finally our problem will become very very small okay so we are reducing the size of our problem okay our problem size is being reduced okay we can see here our problem now our problem becomes smaller okay so recursion what recursion will do i have a big problem i will convert the big problem into smaller problem i will again convert the smaller problem into smaller problem again the smaller problem will be converted into smaller problem and so on okay now let us try to see it in code we will try to solve the same problem so let us take the value of n input from the user okay so let's say i have a function fact so this function fact will return me the answer so i have this fact function i will give it n factorial function and it will return me the answer and let us try to print the n factorial okay now what we have discussed so what will the return type of the function it will be integer then if the function is fact and it will take a integer as argument whose factorial we have to calculate okay so what is the meaning of recursion what we will do we will find out we will convert the big problem 
into smaller problem. So int small answer. I am calling the function factorial and I will give n minus 1. Okay. So now at line number 5, I know the factorial of n minus 1. So what is the factorial of n? It will be what I will do. I just have to return n multiply small answer. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to calculate the factorial of n. So at line number 5, what I am doing, I am calculating the factorial of n minus 1. Okay, what this fact function will do? This fact function takes an integer and it returns an integer which is the factorial of the number. So this fact factorial will give me n minus 1 factorial. Okay, and that n minus 1 factorial is stored in small answer and finally I return n multiply n minus 1 factorial. Okay, now let us try to run our code and let's see what will happen. Okay. Now it is waiting for us to give input. Let's say I want to calculate 4 factorial. Okay. So 4 enter. So what will happen? What is happening here is basically we are getting segmentation fault. Infinite loop. Okay. So this is infinite loop. We are getting segmentation fault. Now let us try to dry run our code. What is happening? Okay. Let's try to dry run our code. Okay. So what is happening here is so I have this function mean, I have this function mean, it is calling the function factorial of n. Okay, so mean is calling fact and let's say the value is 4, n is 4. Okay, so n is 4. Now what is happening here is this factorial function is again calling the factorial function. So it is calling a factorial function, but the value of n is 3. So the value of n is 3. We can understand it this in a different way, but actually it doesn't happen. Okay, so let's try to understand it in a different manner. So I have main. Now main is calling a function factorial. Okay. And the value of n is 4. Okay. Now at this line, what is happening here is let's sup suppose we have another instance of the factorial function. Okay we have another instance of the factorial function and this is calling the factorial but the value of n is 3. You can see here n minus 1. Okay, so this new instance is created. You can assume that but it doesn't happen. Okay, so now what is happening here is so what will happen this fact function it will call fact 2. Again the value of n is 2 here. Now what I want to say here is we know the local variables of one function is different from the local variables of another function. Okay, so this n here the value of n is 4 and here the value of n is 3. So this n and this n they both are different. Okay, they are different. Okay, why different? Because we know the local variables of one function is different from the lo local variables of another function. These are two different functions. Okay, two instances. So this n and this n they both are different. Now what will happen? This will call fact 1. Now the value of n becomes 1. So what is happening here is as soon as we enter this function, we are calling another function. Okay. So now this fact 1, it will call fact 0. So the value of n is 0. Then it will call fact minus 1. It will call fact minus 2 and so on. Okay. So basically it is we are doing infinite calls. Okay. We are doing infinite calls. So this is infinite loop. This is infinite loop. So we are getting segmentation fault. Okay, so why we are getting segmentation fault? So what is happening here is when I reach this line, all these four functions, when I am here, all these four functions are waiting for the factorial one function to complete its work. Okay, all are waiting. All have the copies of n. Now it is taking some memory. Okay. This is taking some memory. This is taking some memory. It is taking some memory. It is taking some memory. Okay. So what will happen? We are, we are doing infinite calls. So at some time it will not be able, the program will not be able to create more memory and we will get segmentation fault. Okay. So when I reach fact minus two, what will happen? All these functions are waiting for the fact minus two function to complete its work. Okay. So everything will take memory. They are taking small, small memories, but we are doing infinite calls. So at some time, what will happen? 
we will get out of memory okay we will not be able to create more memory and we will get segmentation fault due to infinite calls okay so why there are infinite calls because we started at n equals 4 then 3 2 1 0 so ideally what should happen we should stop at 0 or we should stop at 1 okay but here we are making infinite calls okay ideally we should stop at 0 or 1 but we are making here infinite calls I can prove it also so how will I prove it what I will do as soon as I enter this function I will print the value of n okay I will print the value of n now let us try to run this file now let's say the value of n is 4 and as soon as we will print enter so you can see here these are the values of n okay so these are all the values of n these many number of calls I am trying to make here okay so we are making many calls but we could not get our answer finally we will get the segmentation fault due to the lack of the memory okay so we are making many many calls I don't know where it will stop okay it will stop when we get out of memory and we will get segmentation fault due to lack of memory okay it is making these many number of calls and it is trying to find the answer it is trying to find the four factorial okay so at this moment what is happening here is we have due to lack of memory we are getting the segmentation fault okay now let's scroll it up I am not able to scroll it more so what I have done here is so this is the same code you can see here this is the same code I have written this code on ideon and now let's say the input is 4 and we will try to run the file we will try to run the code okay so you can see the output we are getting runtime error why runtime error because of infinite loop okay now you can see here this is the output 4 3 2 1 0 and then minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on okay you can scroll to the bottom and you can see it yourself okay so 4 3 2 1 and then 0 minus 1 minus 2 so ideally what should happen ideally our program should stop at some moment okay our program should stop at some moment now where it should stop okay so what is happening here is factorial 4 function this is calling factorial 3 it is calling factorial 2 it is calling factorial 1 it is calling let's say factorial 0 okay now it is calling factorial minus 1 now according to me there is no need of this call why because this is very trivial problem okay what is 0 factorial 0 factorial is 1 so I already know the answer of 0 factorial so why to make the call to minus 1 okay so what we'll do factorial 0 will return 1 because 0 factorial is 1 okay so our recursion chain will stop here we do not need to go any further okay so factorial 0 will give this output will give its output to factorial 1 okay so we are returning 1 here okay similarly factorial 1 will do its work and it will return the factorial of 1 and so on okay so in recursion we call the same function with the smaller input size okay we are calling the same function with the smaller input size now with the help of the output of the smaller problem we have to calculate our output okay so with the help of I am repeating myself with the help of the output of a smaller problem we have to calculate our output let's say the output of 3 factorial so this is bigger problem and this is smaller problem let's say the output of factorial 3 is x okay so what factorial 4 will do it will multiply 4 with x and then it will return the output to the main okay so with the help of the output of the smaller problem the function we, we will calculate our bigger problem and then we will return our output to the main okay so to stop the recursion chain what we have to do we have to stop our recursion chain here because zero factorial is a very trivial problem we already know the answer so why to why to make call to minus one okay now let's see so we have to call we have to stop we have to stop the recursion chain now to stop the recursion chain I know if the value of n is 0 I already know the answer 0 factorial is 1 so I will return 1 here okay now 
this way our recursion chain will stop. Okay, let's run this file. So let's say the input is 4. Okay, so what is happening here is the value of n is 4, then it becomes 3, then it becomes 2, then it becomes 1, then it becomes 0. Now let's see here, we are not making call to minus 1. Okay, our our function, our recursion chain stops at 0. Okay, we didn't call on minus 1, we stopped at 0. And this is our answer, 24. Okay, so 24 is the 4 factorial. Okay, so our output is right. Now let us dry run our code, how it is working. Okay. So this is our main. Okay, so main is calling factorial 4. Okay, so the value of n is 4 here. And what is happening here is when main calls factorial 4 function, so the main function, it is waiting for the factorial 4 function to return its answer. Okay, so this main function, we are waiting at line number 16. Okay. I am also writing the line number at which the function is waiting. So this main function is waiting at line number 16 for the factorial function to do its work, to complete its work. Okay, so I will enter the factorial function and then we are again making the call. The value of n is not 0. Okay, the value of n is 4. So I am making the call to fact function. So this is calling factorial 3 function, the value of n is 3. And this is waiting at line number 8. Okay, factorial 4 function is waiting at line number 8. Now, again, 3 is not equals to 0. So, it is it will call factorial 2 function. And this is also waiting at line number 8. The value of n is 2. Now, again, 2 is not 0. So, it will call factorial 1 function. So, the value of n is 1. And it is waiting at line number 8. Again, it will wait at line number 8 because 1 is not 0. So, it will call factorial 0 function. Okay, the value of n is 0 now. Okay, so the value of n is 0. Okay, so this condition is true. What I am doing here is I am returning 1. So, what, what will happen? I am returning 1. So, this factorial 0 function, it will return 1. It is returning 1 and we are at line number 8. So, at line number 8, small answer so the small answer it is one here okay now n multiplies small answer so what is the value of n one and small answer is one so it will return one multiply one which is two so it is returning two and the two will st will be stored in the small answer so small answer becomes two now factorial two will do its work okay so sorry it will be one it will be 1. Now factorial 2 will do its work. So 2 multiplies small answer. So small answer will now becomes 2 here. Okay. Now 3 multiply 2. N multiply small answer. So 3 multiply 2. So it will return 6 to the factorial 4 function. So small answer becomes 6 here. Now N multiply small answer. N is 4. Small answer is 6. So it will return 6 into 4, 24 to the mean. Okay, so at line number 16, I am returning 24. So answer contains 24 and I am printing 24 here. Okay, so now what happened here is when I reach, suppose when I am reaching this function, when I reach this function, all these functions, they are out of memory. Okay, they do not exist anymore. Okay, so their weight is over, uh, they are out of memory. So what is happening here is as soon as this function is returning 1 as soon as this function is returning 1 now this function does not exist as soon as this function returns its answer now this function does not exist okay so as soon as factorial 2 function gets the answer from the factorial 1 function its weight is over similarly as soon as the factorial 3 function gets the output of the factorial 2 function its weight is over and so on Okay, so we call it call stack. Okay, this is call stack. I think we have already discussed it in functions. So what is a call stack? So call stack is a, like a glass. So at the bottom we have the main function. Okay, so we have the main function. Main function is calling the factorial 4 function. 
फैक्टोरियल फोर फंक्शन इज कॉलिंग फैक्टोरियल थ्री फंक्शन फैक्टोरियल थ्री फंक्शन कॉल्स फैक्टोरियल टू फंक्शन फैक्टोरियल टू फंक्शन कॉल्स फैक्टोरियल वन फंक्शन एंड फैक्टोरियल वन फंक्शन इज कॉलिंग फैक्टोरियल जीरो फंक्शन ओके एंड फैक्टोरियल जीरो फंक्शन इज नॉट कॉलिंग एनीथिंग ओके सो वट इज अ कॉल स्टैक सो वट विल हैपन सो फैक्टोरियल जीरो will do its work it will complete its work and it will return the answer to the factorial 1 function and then it will goes out of the memory okay it will goes out it will go out factorial 1 function will complete its works and it will return the answer to the factorial 2 function then factorial 1 function will go out okay and this way everything will go out okay everything will go out of the stack okay so we call it call stack we have already discussed it in functions okay so the order is reverse okay factorial zero function so the factorial zero function it comes at last but it goes out first okay this function main so main comes at first but it will go last okay it will wait for the other function to complete their work we do not need to go in so much depth we will discuss something in the next session which is going to make things very easy for us okay but this is how the recursion works internally okay this is how the recursion works internally now i hope you got the idea how the recursion is working okay if you want if you want you can optimize this code also how we can optimize so first of all this is not required now there is one small problem with this code what if the value of n is minus 1 okay what if the value of n is minus 1 then it will never stop again it will become infinite loop let me show you so let's say the value of n is minus 1 a negative value then our code then again it will run into infinite loop okay okay so let's comment it out first now let's see the value of n is minus i will give the value of n negative so minus 1 so again we are getting infinite loop why infinite loop because this is the breaking condition okay now the value of n will never be zero it will keep on reducing so that's why so that's why this will run into infinite loop now to fix this problem what we can do here is we can we can write a condition like if the value of n is negative i will return minus 1 okay factorial for negative numbers are not defined okay so in this case if i will give the input a negative number let's say minus 5 so what will happen so we are getting minus 1 okay because factorial for negative number is not defined we can comment out this code okay so the value of n is minus 5 and the answer is minus 1 because factorial for negative number is not defined okay now this is the correct code okay we are using recursion here okay thank you